hi guys welcome back to my channel so today i am going to discuss about the music on hold media resource which has left this is the uh, third video on the media resources so today we will discuss about the music on hold in detail so what is this music on hold feature actually so as soon as like uh, somebody is pressing the button as a hold so the other party would be able to hear the music on his side like whether that that music is maybe from the fixed audio source or maybe it's an uh, external audio source from where it is getting that music so what is this music on hold music on hold is a software based media resource it provides one way music stream to the user which is on hold so it provides the one way music stream because it doesn't that because you are not uh, like uh, sending anything to that media resource to that particular server mmh server that's why it is just providing one way music stream to the user which is on hold and for this music on hold you need to activate ip voice media streaming service on all cm nodes to configure mmh server and if you want uh, to use your subscriber only one subscriber as a standalone music on hold server then you can use that as well you can just activate this ip vms service on that particular one subscriber and you can use that subscriber for a as a moh server as well. so main thing you can configure the server in two ways that is a normal standalone or a co resident deployment so in what it uh, in the core resident deployment what it can do so in that deployment your moh feature run on any server like you can run this on your publisher or on your any any of your subscriber in that cluster as well that is also running uh, call manager things as well so you can use any any server for the core resident deployment and what is standalone deployment standalone in the standalone deployment your moh feature will run on a dedicated server dedicated server means any of your subscriber or only publisher but it's recommended uh you you can use just uh this service on that particular server we can say and at that point of time that server will neither act as a publisher nor act as a subscriber that means this is the only service that is this ip vms service is the only service which is activated on any of the server and only functionality of that particular server is to send moh stream like if somebody is going on a hold and somebody is putting it on a hold that server will provide moh stream to that particular user this is the only work for that particular server just to send mmh streams to devices which is which are within the network so mmh server like how mmh server uh, we can we can like utilize it mmh server will share the following information with the cm cluster through the db replication process and what all are the things uh, like we can do like we can take this uh, as a audio resource audio resource could be a fixed audio resource as well in your environment or uh, like you can take it from the external as well external so external moh server you can use as well and how you can use it like we have two methods that is unicast or multicast and these things so moh call flow what how it will work so it can work in two ways that is either sscp based or an sip based in sscp we have two things that is unicast or a multicast in sip as well we have unicast as well as multicast what it means like in the unicast you will just reach out to the server to play the stream but in the multicast you will just uh, uh, like go to that particular uh, address like you will have the address for that multicast as well and stream is already playing in that one and you will just go to that particular server and it this your your media stream will start your audio stream will start we will discuss about this sccp and sip unicast and multicast in detail with the help of uh, flow diagrams uh yeah same thing we already discussed about this co resident deployment and a standalone deployment in co resident mmh run on any server either publisher or subscriber and in standalone deployment it run on a dedicated server it that will never act as a publisher or subscriber so what are these unicast moh and the multicast music on hold 
so unicast amoled stream is a point to point like yeah i we know like if uh, somebody needs to uh, somebody needs this particular music on hold then uh, they, this is like we can say this is our audio resource this is phone a this is phone b uh, if we can say this is phone b this is phone c and this is phone d as well so if they are if they need uh, music on hold then this phone a will take this from this particular stream like there is one stream established between this particular server and the phone and then if phone let's suppose this is phone b this is phone a this is phone c and this is phone d so if now phone b also needs this mh service like it needs a stream then it will again reach out to this one and there will be a separate stream and if phone c then there will be a separate stream between server and the c and then if this phone d also needs a stream then it there is a separate audio stream established between phone d and the server so there will be a multiple streams in the environment will run if you need a particular this if you are using this particular unicast thing that's why it is saying unicast mh stream is a point to point and what it's saying one way audio rtp stream yeah it's a one way from mh server to endpoint requesting mh separate audio stream for each user yes separate one a unicast mh call flow is initiated by a message from unicast cm to mh server we will discuss about this in detail in our next slides and it tells just the mh server to send an audio stream to the holdies devices ip address so these things will be clear in the next slides how it will send it how unified cm is reaching out to mh server to send the stream to the hold is device ip address so what is holdy and holder so we can say holder is an endpoint user placing a call on hold who is placing the call on hold and holdy is the endpoint user who, which is placed on hold now we have multicast mh multicast mh stream is a point to multi point like there is a one stream which is running and if there are one two three and four phones they will just reach out to this particular mh stream it it is just uh, this stream is running continuously and you will just reach out to that particular server so it is just sending it the same stream it's not a sending a different stream same stream to the phone a phone b phone c phone d that is why we can say it point to multi point this is also one way media stream between mh server and multicast ip address and it enables multiple users to use same audio resource to provide music on audio yeah, same audio source and multiple users which are using the same audio source and multicast mh call flow is initiated by a message from unified cm to hold the device here you can see the difference between unicast and multicast in the unicast unified cm is initiate a message to the mh server to reach out to the hold this device ip address and in the multicast unified cm is reaching out to the holdy device and it will give the multicast ip address to the holdy device so that it can reach out to that particular group address multicast address it just instructs the endpoint device to join that particular group address of the configured multicast mh audio stream so let's discuss about these unicast mh and the multicast mh in detail let's start with the scp multicast now so this is the sccp multicast call flow as you can see it here we have this mh server here we have our phone b ip phone here we have subscriber and we have another phone that is phone a and here we are just assuming that the rtp stream is already established established between the phone a and the phone b so as soon as phone a is pressing the hold key the hold button on his phone so what it will do it will just it, as it is showing it will just send the message of this hold to your subscriber soft key event message like i am pressing the hold button so just uh, hold the other other side party as well so i so phone a is telling your subscriber that i don't need to hear anything from the phone b right now so he is just pressing the hold key so as soon as he is pressing the hold key what subscriber will do 
subscriber will send this SCP close receive channel, this one close receive channel to the phone A as well as phone B. As you can see it here, subscriber is sending close receive channel to this, the destination party that is phone B and the phone A as well. So subscriber is stopping the communication between phone B and phone A right now. So as soon as it says sends the message close receive channel, it just sends the again next message that is stop media transmission. So subscriber will not accept anything from the phone B because subscribe phone A just put the hold, just put the phone B on hold. So subscriber will not accept anything. It will just send a message to the phone B to stop the media transmission. Okay. And it will just send the same message to the phone A as well. Stop the media transmission. So nothing will be getting interchanged between phone A and phone B at this point of time. So now what subscriber will do at this point of time, phone B is on hold. So it should like this phone B should hear a music, should hear a music on hold, like he is on hold, so it should hear a music. So what it will do, what subscriber will do, subscriber will send the multicast address, this one, as you can see multicast address, this multicast address to the phone B, so that phone B can directly reach out to that particular multicast address and it can hear the music. As you can see, this is a multicast RTP stream, which is continuously running. Continuously, it is continuously running. So at this point of time, what phone B will do? Phone B, right now phone B is having this particular multicast address. So phone B will reach out to that multicast address with the IGMP message. So phone B will send an IGMP message to the multicast address and it will just play the multicast stream. As you can see, as soon as phone B sends an IGMP message to the multicast address, it is sending the multicast RTP stream to the phone B. So at this point of time, phone B is hearing the multicast stream, which is continuously running there. So at this point of time, your phone B is on hold because the RTP stream like RTP stream like music on hold stream is already there from that particular multicast address. So at this point of time, if phone A is pressing the resume button, so if he is pressing a resume, it means that a soft key event message, the uh, resume is a soft key. So it is sending a soft key event message to the subscriber and what subscriber will do, subscriber will tell phone B to stop the multicast media reception. That means to just to stop that multicast stream and just communicate with phone A. How it will send it? It will just send first message that is stop multicast media reception. And what phone will do, phone B will do, phone B will send a leave group message to that particular multicast IP address. So he's just leaving the earlier, he just added into that group where multicast stream was running. So now phone B is just leaving the group. And at that point of time, what subscriber will do? Subscriber will send open receive channel to phone A as well as phone B. Now the receiving channel is open from the both ends. Phone B is able to receive the channels now as well as phone A. And then subscriber will send a start media transmission with the phone B's IP address to the phone A and will send a start media transmission to the phone B with the phone A's IP address because subscriber will have the IP address of both phone A as well as phone B. So as soon as phone A receives the IP address of phone B and the phone B receives an IP address of phone A, there will be an RTP stream which will establish between phone A and phone B again. So this was our SCCP multicast call flow. So now uh, I hope uh, you really learned something from this SCCP multicast call flow. Now let's discuss about the SCCP unicast call flow, how the unicast will occur. Now you need to make sure you just, you know the difference between unicast and multicast what it is doing in the unicast and what it is doing in the multicast. I will discuss it after this SCCP unicast call flow. So 
in this SSAP unicast call flow, I am just assuming like RTP stream is already established between phone A and phone B. And as soon as the phone A presses the hold button, that is the same thing. Soft key event message will be there and subscriber will send close receive channel to the both parties and it will send the same thing. Stop media transmission to the both parties phone A and phone B. Now what subscriber will do after that? Earlier, it was just sent close receive channel. Now subscriber will send an open receive channel to phone B. Why it is sending the phone B as an open receive channel? Because he will just, uh, the phone B will just receive a stream from the MH server. Earlier in SCCP multicast, phone B was reaching out to the multicast server. And, or in this SCCP unicast, subscriber will reach out to the MOH server. You can, you can see the difference. Now, earlier phone B was reaching out to the multicast stream. In the unicast, subscriber will reach out to the MOH server with the phone B IP address. So here in this sub phone sub subscriber will reach out to this MOH server SCCP and will tell him that start the media transmission to the phone B's IP address. Subscriber have the IP address of phone B. So it will tell your subscriber will tell MOH server to start the media transmission to the phone B's IP address. So at that point of time, what MOH server will do, MOH server will establish a one way audio stream to the phone B, this one. RTP stream is starting active one way. Now at this point of time, phone B is on hold. So it will just play the audio stream as soon as the phone B is on hold. So now, if phone A is just pressing the soft key again to resume that call, it will send the same soft key event message that is resume one. And what subscriber will do, subscriber will send close receive channel because at this point of time, chan receive channel is open at phone B. So it will first tell phone B to close the receive channel and which channel he needs to close the RTP stream channel. At this point of time, phone uh, subscriber will reach out to this particular MH server to stop the media transmission to phone B. It will send an SSAP message, stop media transmission. So at this point of time, phone B's uh, channel is closed and MH server is also not sending any uh, RTP stream to the phone B. Now what subscriber will do, subscriber will again open a receive channel message to the phone B as well as phone A and will send Again, the same messages, media transmission start to the phone A as well as phone B. So to the phone A, it will send the phone B's IP address and to the phone A, your subscriber will send the phone A's IP address. So as soon as phone B receives, this phone B receives phone A's IP address and phone A receives a phone, a phone B's IP address, your RTP stream will establish between these two parties. So now I hope you can differentiate between these two unicast and the multicast how it will work let's let me discuss about this once again about this unicast and multicast what's the main difference so in multicast as here you can see what subscriber was doing subscriber was telling phone b as a like he is just telling to phone b as a multicast ip address so subscriber will tell multicast address to the phone B so that phone B can reach out to the multicast server, multicast stream where the stream is establishing. Phone B will reach out to the MH server. And in unicast call flow, what subscriber will do? Unicast In unicast call flow, subscribers is reaching out to the MOH server and he is telling the phone B's IP address to the MOH server so that MOH server can play RTP stream to the phone B's address. This is the main difference between the unicast as well as the multicast. So now let's discuss about the SIP multicast and the SIP unicast call flow. Like what all are the things, uh, what all are the messages getting interchanged between the subscriber phone A, phone B and the multicast server. Now let's start with the SIP multicast call flow and uh, we are already assuming RTP stream is established and phone A is sending the, phone A is just pressing the hold button. It means it's sending the hold request. So as soon as this phone A will press the hold button, it will just send a SIP invite message because the 
first message in SIP is a, is an invite message as if if you already know if you don't have any idea about the SIP messages SIP call flow how the SIP call flow works then please go and check out my other videos on the session initiation protocol I have created three videos and that will give you an overview like starting from the scratch and at the end as well it's an advanced level as well you will be able to understand everything about the session initiation protocol in those videos so as soon as phone a is pressing the hold key what it will send it will send an invite message to the subscriber and in that invite what it will send it will send the sdp sdp means the messages phone a ip address rtp port number and a is equal to send only it means at this point of time it will not receive anything it is just send only okay and after this invite there will be like uh, there is a response that is a final response that is 200 okay response and it will send the sdp message again and it contains the ip address rtp port number and the a is equal to receive only what it means it will just receive something from phone a this subscriber can receive but at this point of time phone a is saying phone a will send only he will not receive anything right now okay so at this point of time you can say the ip address is showing 0.0.0.0, .0. it means if phone a is sending something like or if you can say your subscriber is saying if phone b is saying, saying sending something i will send it to this ip address that is 0.0.0, .0, .0 until phone a presses the resume key because subscriber is not subscriber is just having one ip address that is uh, it's just a normal 0.0.0.0, .0 means it will send anything which is coming from phone b to this ip address so that phone a will not hear anything at that point of time so as soon as phone a receives the 200 okay and it will just send an acknowledgement this one this with these were for them these are these are the messages between phone and subscribe so now what subscriber will do subscriber will send an invite message again to the phone b and it will send the sdp as well sdp contains the ip address rtp port number and a is it's saying it's an inactive so if phone b will send something it will go to the 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 ip address and that ip address is nothing so as soon as it sent this SIP invite, uh, this uh, this subscriber will receive 200 OK response. In SDP, it will receive the phone B's IP address, port number, and A is equal to inactive. So now the subscriber will send an acknowledgement as well, this thing. So these are the first initial messages which are getting interchanged between the subscriber and phone B and the subscriber and phone A. So at this stage, at this stage we just have one thing that is the person is only on hold that phone b is only on hold now what he needs to do now phone b should hear a music stream because music on hold stream and we are using a multicast call flow that means in this multicast phone b needs to reach out to the multicast server address this multi moh server okay so what subscriber will do subscriber will send and sip invite message with the IP address of that particular MOH server where multicast stream is already continuously running and it is sending the RTP port number and A is equal to receive only because at this point of time, this is a, also a one way audio stream. That's why it is written over as A is equal to receive only. Now 200 OK, there's a response of 200 OK and SDP contains that particular IP address, RTP port number A is equal to receive only to the subscriber and it will just send an acknowledgement. And in that particular time, phone B will send an IGMP message to that particular multicast address to just give me the RTP stream. So once IGMP message is there, multicast address will send multicast RTP stream to the phone B and the music on hold stream will establish. So at this point of time, your phone B is on hold and he is just receiving the MOH streams. Now, if your phone A is pressing the resume button, at this point of time, phone B wants to resume the call. He will just send an invite message in SDP. And in the SDP, it will send 
his IP address, port number, and here you can see it is sending send receive. Means at this point of time, phone A can send anything, phone A will receive anything as well from the other part. Here you can see it is saying send only. It will not receive because he just put the he just presses the hold button. Now he is just sending and receiving both things. Now you can see before sending this invite to the phone B, subscriber will send an invite message to just to stop the service of this multicast RTP stream. It will send an invite message, SIP invite. SDP will be 0, .0, .0, 0, 0 RTP port number and A is equal to inactive. It means just to stop this RTP stream and your phone B will send the response in SIP. It just send the SDP and phone B's IP address port number and inactive and your subscriber will send an acknowledgement. So as soon as subscriber will receive these things uh, like the 200 OK as well as uh, uh, 200 OK and it will send the acknowledgement at that point, at that particular point, your RTP stream will stop like this leave group message will be there. After that, it will send the same this invite message, which is from the phone A, send this invite message to the phone B and phone B will respond with 200 OK and it contains the phone B's IP address port number and here also A is equal to send receive. That means phone B is able to send anything, phone B is able to receive anything as well. So at that particular point of time, subscriber will send an acknowledgement with the phone A's IP address and the RTP port number because subscriber already, subscriber is already having phone A's IP address. So he will send an acknowledgement as a phone A's IP address and the RTP port number and subscriber will send 200 OK message to the phone A as well, which contains phone B's IP address and the RTP port number. And then both will like, uh, this is this one was the acknowledgement earlier because this is uh, here we can say delayed offer and this is we can say the early offer. So because there is a uh, SDP in the 200 OK. So uh, after this 200 OK, it will phone A will send an acknowledgement to the subscriber and then RTP stream will establish between phone A and phone B. I hope things are clear between the SIP multicast call flow and the SCCP multicast call flow. Okay, now let's discuss about the SIP unicast call flow. There is only one difference in the SIP multicast, the same thing, phone B is reaching out to the multicast server and in SIP unicast call flow, subscriber will reach out to the AMH server. Here you can see, the same things as soon as phone A is pressing the hold key, yeah, RTP stream is already established. We are just assuming. So as soon as phone A, this phone A is pressing the hold key, it will just send the SDP as a phone A RTP port number and send only, receive only acknowledgement. Again, inactive, inactive, inactive. So till this, till this stage, I can say everything is same between the unicast as well as multicast. After this, Subscriber will send an invite to the phone B and there will be a response in the 200 OK with the phone B's IP address and the send receive. So at this point of time, subscriber will reach out to this MOH server to play the stream to the phone B's IP address. Here you can see our, this subscriber is reaching out to the directly to this MOH server start the, to start the media transmission and it will just give the phone B's IP address and the RTP port number. So RTP stream will establish as a one way RTP stream to the phone B. And at this point of time, after this 200 OK, it will just send a acknowledgement as well with the subscriber IP. Now at this stage, phone B is on hold. And as soon as this phone A is pressing the resume key, he will just give the all his information, phone A's IP address, port number and send receive. And this your subscriber will send an invite message to stop the transmission, to stop this multimedia, this RTP stream uh, media transmission between MOH and phone B. So it is saying inactive, just do the inactive and IP address 0.0.0. .0. Then he will just respond with 200 OK and the acknowledgement. And then this subscriber will send a message to the MOH server to stop the media transmission. So as soon as the media transmission stops, this subscriber is sending these details of phone A IP address to the phone B. In this invite, we can say it's just invited 
and phone B just send the 200 OK with his IP address, port number, and this one. And then subscriber B will negotiate and send it in the acknowledgement as a phone A's IP address, this one, phone A IP address and the RTP port number. And then this subscriber will send phone B's IP address and the RTP phone number to the RTP port number to the phone A. So now at this stage, phone B receives the phone A's IP address, phone A receives the phone B's IP address. So after that, once they receive these information, IP address and the RTP port number, your RTP stream will establish between phone A and phone B. I hope things are clear to you between this unicast and multicast and SIP unicast, SIP multicast and SCCP unicast and SCCP multicast call flow. Okay, so now let's discuss <clears throat> about this uh, media resource management with media resource groups and the media resource group list, how we can configure it on our CUCM. So if, we, if I just talk about the media resource groups, so if you can just go to the media source group information, you can put the name. And if you are if you have already configured the media resources, it will show up here in the available media resources. Here you can see it is showing these media resources which are already available. That's why it is written over here. So here you can select it from these and just drop it down to the selected media resources. So we can see we just uh, uh, implemented this as a remote hardware MRG. These are the hardware media resources which we I am using. And let's create another group, media resource group, as a software resource MRG where we can use the software media resources. Available media resources, it's showing up here. And we can just choose uh, the software media resource. Like this one is a software one. So we will choose this one. So we just created two media groups, one with the remote hardware, means hardware media resources, and one with the software media resources and let's see how we can put it in our media resource group list so that we can utilize it so here you can see what media resource group list is used to define a prioritized list of media resource groups so this is a media resource group list and we are just defining it the media source groups the mrgl is then used to associate those resources with the okay we'll discuss about this one so here you can see media resource group list configuration contains media resource groups as it is showing available media source groups so these are the media resource group which we just created like these are the media resources named as remote ps611 remote hardware mrg and ps611 software here you can see it is showing ps611 remote and the software so what we are doing it here we are putting the hardware media resource as well as software media resource in this particular media resource group list. This hardware media resource contains these things, these hardware MTP, Transcode, Conference Bridge, and all these things. And this is contains, this next list contains software resource MRG, which contains software media resources like Annunciator, Conference Bridge, Multicast MOH, and the MTP. So here you can see if there is a call which is running right now, and uh, that call needs an enunciator and it will check in this MRGL like there is no enunciator in this because enunciator is a software one. So depends on the priority, it will check it here first. If he is not able to find it, it will check it here in the next second, second priority. Here it, it can see the enunciator then it will just play the tone. So where now what we can do, we created MRG and we created media resource group list as well. So we can put this media resource group list to the various stages, various uh, devices, I can say. So from here, from uh, in the media resources, we, you can go to the media resource group and media resource group list and you can create it. So media resource group, we just created this one. And this media resource group list, we created this one as well. And we put the media resources here. Now where you can put this media resource group list, you can go, you can, uh, put this media resource group list to the device pool as well, to the CTI route point, to the gateway, to the phone, and to the trunk as well. So you can put this media resource group list at various devices so that they can use it on the device pool as well as CTI route point, gateway, phone, and the trunk. So I hope the things are clear to you related with the media resource groups, media resource group lists, Annunciator, Transcoder, Conference Bridges, 
music on hold and this SCCP multicast call flow and CP unicast, SIP multicast and the SCCP unicast call flow as well. I hope all the all things are clear to you uh, as of now. I hope you really liked this video. You have maybe you learned something from this video as well. Just let me know in the comment section. If you really liked it, please like, share and subscribe my channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.